All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. And peace to everyone joining us on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel Bible Studies program. And today is a very, very special day. This particular lesson will be entitled, From Atonement to Tabernacles. From Atonement to Tabernacles. So we're going to tackle both subjects on this particular lesson. From Atonement to tab Tabernacles. Okay, today being our Feast of Tabernacles. We're gathered here in honor of that. This is the Feast of, also it's called In-Gathering, okay? Symbolizes when we'll be with the uh, king in his kingdom after he comes and settles the, the score. So, with that, we're going to get into the atonement. From atonement to tabernacles. And one of the things we have to remember is that these holy days are very, very significant to the Lord. Now, can we keep them perfectly today? No, we cannot. OK, because when we're not in Jerusalem, we don't have the Levitical priesthood, so on and so forth. But we do memorialize these feast days in honor of him, preparing ourselves for what life will be like when we get into the kingdom. So all these are memorials of these actual feast days and we want to observe them because the Bible tells us to observe them as Paul would say therefore let us keep the feast okay so we want to keep the feast okay as is prescribed to the best of our ability and our Messiah will make up the rest <clears throat> where we fall short so let's begin this lesson over in 1st Corinthians 15 if you will and let's take a look at this and then we'll get of course, where the feast days are found, which is in Leviticus. So in 1 Corinthians 15, let's take a look at this particular lesson. And as always, it is an honor and a privilege, okay, and a pleasure for me to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day, especially on one of the Lord's high Sabbaths. So in 1 Corinthians 15, let's pick it up at verse 1, brother. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Moreover, brethren... I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, mm -hmm. which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, mm -hmm. by which also ye are saved, mm -hmm. if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, mm -hmm. unless ye have believed in vain. Okay, you got to keep in memory all these things. Just keep in memory. Okay, so, by the, he said, by which ye also are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. Continue, brother. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sin according to the Scriptures. According to the Scriptures, because we can find Christ in the Old Testament, even though some people want to deny that, but that's what he said, according to the Scriptures. So, obviously, we find our Christ in the Scriptures. Go ahead, brother. And that he was buried, mm -hmm. and that he rose again the third day, mm -hmm. according to the Scriptures. According to the Scriptures. So, where is Paul getting all this from? He said, according to the Scriptures. According to the scriptures. So we find Christ according to the scriptures. Read five and we'll move on. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Mm -hmm. Now let's go on over to um, Leviticus 23 where we find these holy days. And we always touch on who the holy days belong to. We touch on that and then we move forward. Okay. So let's go to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1, 23 and verse 1. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. And the Lord spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and say unto them, mm -hmm. Concerning the feast of the Lord. That's why these are called feast days, holiday, um, holy days, and annual Sabbaths, or high Sabbaths. But go ahead. Which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation, mm -hmm. even these are my feasts. Now we know who these feasts belong to. So these are not the feast of the Jews. These are the feast of the Lord. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest. Yes, sir. And holy convocation, mm -hmm. you shall do no work therein. Mm -hmm. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Okay, so he start with the weekly Sabbath because he said that's important. Because we're going to do that more often. Okay, every week we're supposed to observe the Sabbath. Now he's going to get into the annual Sabbaths. Go ahead. Ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, mm -hmm. even holy convocation, mm -hmm. which ye shall proclaim in their season. Yes, sir. So now we already dealt with Passover and unleavened bread, and we dealt with trumpets, Pentecost, all that. So drop down to verse 26. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, mm -hmm. there shall be a day of atonement. And what shall we do? Go ahead. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. To gather together and do what? And you shall afflict your soul mm -hmm. and offer an offering made by fire okay, unto so that, the Lord. Okay, so we're supposed to afflict our souls. Our soul is uh, you know, our body and our being. That's going to be a fast. But guess what? We'll read it in Scripture. 
Okay, we'll catch it in scripture, but we will afflict our soul. That's one way we afflict our soul. Okay, continue, brother. And you shall do no work in the same day, mm -hmm. for it is a day of atonement. Yes, sir. To make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Okay, to atone for your sins, to wash away your sins, to erase that ledger that we all have, that record, to erase that ledger of sin. That's why it's a day of atonement. Okay, and obviously in the day when he comes back and change our body, that is him paying for it. That is a Messiah paying for it, erasing those sins and say, okay, you're one of uh, mine. You're part of my family. Okay, so that's what this symbolizes atoning for our sins. Go ahead, brother. For whatsoever so it be that child not be afflicted in that same day, mm -hmm. he shall be cut off from among his people. Okay, he's supposed to be afflicted that day. It's a day of, you know, solemn realizing our sinful nature, realizing our flesh, and then we're supposed to atone for that. No eating, no drinking. Focus on what we have done and what the Messiah has done for us to atone for that. Okay, we don't kill the lambs today because we have Messiah now, but they had to back then. Okay, it wasn't just running around, being merry and partying and all that. Not the Day of Atonement. OK, that particular one is not a feast day. OK, it's called a feast day, but you don't actually have a feast in that day. Go ahead. And whatsoever so it be that doeth any work in that same day, mm -hmm. the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Go ahead. You shall do no manner of work. Mm -hmm. It shall be a statue for every throughout your generation mm -hmm. and all your dwelling. OK, so is, is it OK for me to just say what the Lord says? That's what it says. So that's what we read. OK, that's what it means. OK, what else? Thirty two. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, mm -hmm. and you shall afflict your soul. You shall afflict your soul. What else? In the ninth day of the month at even, mm -hmm. from even unto even, mm -hmm. shall you celebrate your Sabbath. That's how you celebrate your Sabbath, from even unto even. That's why we say from sundown to sundown. The Bible says that, right? From evening to evening. All right? So that's why we do it. Let's go to Isaiah 58. Let's go to Isaiah 58 and take a look at it. We know exactly why we do it. That's what the Bible says. So we're going to roll with what the Bible says. Okay, Isaiah 58, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Fifty-eight, right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 58. Let's take a look at this real quick. On verse 1? Verse 1, sir. Cry aloud, mm -hmm. tear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, mm -hmm. and show my people their transgression, yes. and the house of Jacob their sin. Okay, so he said, let people know what they have done wrong. That's what the job is right here. That's what he's saying to uh, you know Isaiah. Cry aloud, spare not. Okay, let them know, hey, you have transgressed, you have broken this covenant. Go ahead in verse 2. Yet they seek me daily, mm -hmm. and delight to know my ways, mm -hmm. as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance. Of their God. Mm -hmm. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. Mm -hmm. They take delight in approaching to God. Go ahead. Wherefore have we fasted? Yep, today? they fasted. Go ahead. And thou seest not. Mm -hmm. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Mm -hmm. And thou takest no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure mm -hmm. and exact all your labor. So that's what he's saying. He said, okay, well, we did. We set aside a fast. We did all that. Okay. And you don't see us. You didn't see us. We set aside a fast, you know. But he said, wherefore have you afflicted your soul? So have you? Have you? And then thou taken no knowledge of it. That's what they're asking. They said, behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You still do what you wanted to do. You didn't rest. You did what you wanted to do. Okay? And exact all your labors. Okay? But that's not what the fast is for. So even when you set, set apart a fast, let it be a fast. Okay? Rest and be a fast and focus on what you should be focusing on. Okay? Which is the most high. OK, he's supposed to be focused on Christ. He's the one who atoned for your sins. So when he say when you fast, do it right. You did your kind of fast. You still partying, doing what you want to do, finding your own pleasure. That is the problem. OK, so he said, you know, for your, your fast, you find pleasure and exact your own labors. Verse four. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, mm -hmm. and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not fast as you do this day, mm -hmm. to make your voice to be heard on high. Yeah, you crying, you, you you speaking loud, you 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 talking all this noise and everything, but you're not doing this fast correctly. You want to be heard, you want to be seen, you're trying to be somebody special or whatever, but it doesn't work like that, says the Lord. Go ahead. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? It's not the kind of fast that I have chosen, says the Lord. Go ahead. A day for a man to afflict his soul. Go ahead. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush mm -hmm. and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Mm-hmm. 
Would thou call this a fast, mm -hmm. an acceptable day to the Lord? Yeah, you don't get to do it how you want to do it. Okay, go ahead. It's not this fast that I have chosen mm -hmm. to lose the bands of wickedness. This is the fast that I've chosen to loosen the bands of wickedness. Uh huh. To undo the heavy burden. Uh huh. And to let the oppressed go free. And what else? And that you break every yoke. Yes. Go ahead. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Give to the hungry. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out on thy house. Bring the poor that are cast out to your house. What else? When thou seest the naked, mm -hmm. that thou cover him, mm -hmm. and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. From your own brethren. This, this is the kind of fast that I'm talking about. Okay? Someone's poor and hungry. Well, you know, this, this, this particular fast, what he's talking about. This is the things that I want you to do. You're supposed to, to bring the poor that are cast out to your house. When thou seest the naked... That thou cover him. Isn't that the kind of stuff I want you to do? And that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Your own brother, he's suffering or whatever. Do you, you're not going to help him? Why aren't you helping him? Go ahead. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Mm -hmm. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. And what else? And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. That's what we're talking about. So when you fast, your glory, that's what you're seeking for. You're seeking for his glory to come upon you when you fast. You help you help someone less fortunate. You do these type because it, the, the Christians, do, they do have this part right, that they are supposed to see the Messiah in you. Some of the actions that the Messiah would do. Would he feed someone? Yes. Would he clothe someone? Yes. You should do the same thing. You can't do all this stuff for your own glory so that you get praise heaped upon you and you're the big shot. OK, you're supposed to do these things because it is the right thing to do. Continue. Then shall thou call, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall answer. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt cry, mm -hmm. and he shall say, Here I am. Okay. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke. That, pr that oppression, that yoke, go ahead. The putting forth of the finger, mm -hmm. and speaking vanity. Okay, so if you do that, if you um, take away from the midst of thee your yoke, this oppression, this, this, this burden, okay, all these things, beating people across the head, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, take that away, okay, stop that, and then putting forth the finger, and speaking vanity. Stop doing that. Try to be a help, okay? Not pointing the blame and stuff like that, okay? You point one finger, you got three pointing right back at you, okay? This is what he's talking about. Go ahead. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry mm -hmm. and satisfy the afflicted soul, okay. Okay. then shall thy light rise in obscurity mm -hmm. and the, thy darkness be as the noonday. Okay, so if you draw out your soul to the hungry, so if you do, for example, feed the hungry, Okay, and you satisfy those who are afflicted, you help out those, then that your light shall rise in obscurity, okay? Your glory or the darkness shall be as the noonday. Then it will be known because God will glorify you, okay? You humble yourself, guess who exalts you? Go ahead, brother. And the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul and mm -hmm. drop. Mm -hmm. And make fat thy bones, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be like a water garden, mm -hmm. and like a spring of water whose water fell not. Mm -hmm. And they that shall be on thee shall build the old waste place. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, yes. the restorer of paths to dwell in. This is what we're talking about. So when you do this fast and you this affliction or whatever, this is what comes after that. This is what he's trying to do. He said, you're going to be the one to restore the paths that do well, the repairer of the breach when there's a breakdown. OK, but that's why you're doing it. OK, so if I fast or you fast and we do those things, we afflict our souls. We're thinking about we're trying to become spiritually minded because man should not live by bread alone. Right. Hmm. So you're trying to be spiritually minded because he is our sustenance. All right. So when you start getting that character in you, because while you're afflicted, while you're fasting, those are the things you're supposed to focus on. So while you're trying to be spiritually minded, then the fruits of the spirit will come from you. Helping, helping the poor, the less fortunate. Feeding those who are afflicted. That's why I said, is this the kind of fast where you just do whatever you want to do? And you find your own pleasure. You're not focusing in on what we're supposed to be doing this uh, for. Okay, go ahead, brother. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, mm -hmm. from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, go ahead and call the Sabbath a delight, yes, sir, the holy of the Lord, mm -hmm. honorable and shall honor him, mm -hmm. not doing thine own way, mm -hmm. nor finding thine own pleasure, mm -hmm. nor speaking thine own word. So he reversed all that other stuff. Don't find your own pleasures, quit speaking vanity and stuff like that. 
you know. And what else he said? No speaking thy own words. Okay, go ahead. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, mm -hmm. and I will call thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, mm -hmm. and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, mm -hmm. thy father. Mm -hmm. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. See, it. not me, not not me. It's the, the the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If you just do these type things, I'll take care of you. If you do the Sabbath that I'm talking about, you're talking about the Sabbath here, and you're talking about the annual one too. They're all Sabbaths, okay? These are all holy days, appointed times. That's what the uh, Moedims are in the Hebrew. That's what these is, these Moedims, these Moeds, these appointed times. So we do it at the time appointed the best way we can. You're at least trying because the Lord look at them as a stumbling little child. You teach a child to walk, they stumble, they fall. Do you throw them away? Ah, that, that kid's broken. No. You make a mistake, he is patient with you. He's long-suffering. That's what we have to remember. So at least try. Some people say don't even try. Scripture says you need to at least try. That's what we're looking at. Uh, let's go to Acts 27. Still in, a, in the New Testament, they still do these type things, but they want to convince you, okay, that you don't have to do any of this stuff. And none of this stuff is found in the New Testament. But I'm just going to get one scripture and keep your eye on Leviticus because we're going to go back to Leviticus in just a second. But I just want one scripture. Go to Acts 27. And when we get to Acts 27, I only want one verse. Because this is the thing. This is what we have to understand. We have to memorialize these things and keep these things in mind and actually put it on our heart. This is what we have to do. We have to put it on our heart. So we can move forward. You want to get closer to God? You want to, you, you want to know what's on his heart? Then, okay, read his word, and you'll know exactly what's on his heart. Acts 27, let's read verse 9 real quick. Acts 27 and 9. Mm -hmm. Now when much time was spent, mm -hmm. and when sailing was now dangerous, mm -hmm. because the fast was now already past, yes. Paul admonished them. There you go. Okay, so we see the fast. So they did a fast again. The, the fast. Not a fast. The fast had already passed. Okay? The fast. Now we're back to Leviticus 16. Let's look at this atonement a little bit. And we're going to jump around Leviticus 16 a little bit. And then I'm going to back up. So when you get to Leviticus 16, pick it up at verse 29, and we're going to jump around a little. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. 16 and 29 of Leviticus. Go ahead. And this shall be a statue forever unto you, mm -hmm. that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, mm -hmm. you shall afflict your soul mm -hmm. and do no work at all, mm -hmm. whether it be one of your own country Who else? or a stranger that sojourneth among you. Don't matter if it's an Israelite or not, now does it? Mm -hmm. Who is ever with you? Go ahead. For on that day shall be priests make an at atonement for you mm -hmm. to cleanse you, mm -hmm. and you may be clean from all of your sins before the Lord. Now we know what atonement means, right? Yes, sir. To cleanse you, that, 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 that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. 31. It shall be a Sabbath of rest mm -hmm. unto you, mm -hmm. and you shall afflict your souls by a statue forever. And now you know why we still do it. So we still do it. Now we're going to back up, jump, drop back down. You're still in Leviticus 16, but go to verse 6. Verse 6. You're still in 16, but start at 6. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, okay. which is for himself, mm -hmm. and make an atonement for himself mm -hmm. and for his house. Now we know who Aaron is. Okay, we know Aaron was the high priest. Okay. And uh, verse 7. And he shall take the two goats mm -hmm. and present them before the Lord. Yes, sir. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. Two goats. Okay, now let's see what that is. Go ahead. One lot for the Lord mm -hmm. and the other lot for the scapegoat. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord lot fell mm -hmm. and offer him for a sin offering. Yes, sir. But the goat on which the lot fell to be to escape goat mm -hmm. shall be presented alive before the Lord. Presented alive. So you're going to have one goat that will be slain and another uh, goat that will uh, remain alive. Go ahead. To make an atonement with him mm -hmm. and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. That is the, That symbolizes that goat is taking your sin and running with it. Okay, that's the scapegoat. That's where we get scapegoat from. Okay, someone else or this lamb is going to take your sins. Don't we have a symbol of that? Someone dying and taking our sins. That's what we have. Now you use two goats because the Lord ain't going to. He's not resurrecting goats. He just used two goats. One live goat, one goat to be slain. Okay, so he's not going to resurrect goat. Drop down to verse six, 15, 15, verse 15. 15. 15. Uh huh. 
Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering yep. that is for the people, mm -hmm. and bring his blood within the veil, mm -hmm. and do with what the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, mm -hmm. and sprinkle upon the mercy seat, mm -hmm. and before the mercy seat. Go ahead. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place, mm -hmm. because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. For our sins, go ahead. And because of their transgressions and all their sins. Mm -hmm. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of congregation mm -hmm. that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness yes and there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation mm -hmm. when he goeth to make an atonement into the holy place mm -hmm. until he come out yep. and have made an atonement for himself mm -hmm. and for his household and for all the congregation of israel okay so everyone needs to be atoned for with, with with that sin offering that goat go ahead and he shall go out onto the altar that is before the lord mm -hmm. and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock mm -hmm. and of the blood of the goat mm -hmm. and put it upon the horns of the altar around about. Go ahead. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven times mm -hmm. and cleanse it mm -hmm. and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Yep. And when he has made an end of the reconciling the holy place mm -hmm. and the tabernacle of the congregation mm -hmm. and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Now he's going to bring the live goat. Go ahead. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat mm -hmm. and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And all the transgressions and all their sins, mm -hmm. putting them upon the head of the goat. And what else? And shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Go ahead. And the goat shall bear upon all his all their iniquity mm -hmm. unto a land not inhabited, mm -hmm. and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Okay, go with me to uh, Hebrews. See, that's what it is, okay? He just used two goats, but we're talking about Christ representing both of the lambs, okay? Being sacrificed, being killed for that, but also being made alive, okay, for our sins. The death and the resurrection of it, okay? As a scapegoat to take away our sins, because Christ's death and resurrection took away our sins now all we have to do is get back into covenant so we can be a part of that amen all right let's go to hebrews 9 go to hebrews chapter 9 so let's take a look at this that's what this atonement is for hebrews chapter 9 hebrews 9 let's take a look of it look at it real quick hebrews 9 pick it up at verse 1 and then we'll skip around a little bit Hebrews 9, verse 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service. We just read some of that divine service, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And a worldly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. For there was a tabernacle made, mm -hmm. the first wherein was the candlestick, mm -hmm. and the table, and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. Go ahead. And after the second vial, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Okay, so in the second veil, when he built the tabernacle, you can walk into the tabernacle, but then there's another veil that goes into what's called the holiest of the holiest of holies, okay? Drop down to verse 6. Now when these things were thus ordained, mm -hmm. the priest went always into the first tabernacle, mm -hmm. accomplishing the service of God. What else? But into the second went the high priest alone mm -hmm. once every year. One, that's Not the day of atonement. Blood, Go ahead. Which he offered for himself mm -hmm. and for the errors of the people. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Go ahead. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present, mm -hmm. in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices mm -hmm. that could not make him that did the service perfect yep. as pertaining to the conscience. Yes. Which stood only in meat and drink and diverse washings and carnal ordinance mm -hmm. imposed on them unto the time of reformation. Okay, now he's saying this old covenant where we had to do the service of God and the, the, the showbread and that's candlestick and all the things that they had to do, okay? They go in and make atonement for themselves and they had to make atonement for all the children of Israel, the congregation. They had to do all those type of things. And it's something that they had to do, which was a figure for the time then present. At that time, that's what they had to do, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. They had to do that. That could not... Make him that did the service perfect, I mean, couldn't permanently take away his sins. Why? Because they had to do it every year, didn't they? Hmm. They had to do it every year. Okay, that's why they said never with those sacrifices could never make the uh, comers thereunto perfect. Okay, because they had to do it because they said then it would cease from sin. Okay, because, yeah, the law is the consciousness of sin. We understand that. Okay, so it said uh, not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience because he we always had the knowledge of sin. Even when you have to make the atonement, you're being reminded while you're doing this. It. It's like, okay, yeah, but God, I sinned. Okay? But, verse 10. Uh, which stood only in meat and drink mm -hmm. and diverse washing 
and carnal ordinance mm -hmm. imposed on them until the time of reformation. Keep going. But Christ being come and high priest mm -hmm. of good things to come mm -hmm. by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Yep. Not made with hands. Correct. That is to say, not of this building. Of course. So he's not of flesh. He didn't come of the earth. Okay. Like like us. Like Adam made from the. No. It's but he his body was prepared by the Father himself. But go ahead. Neither by the blood of goats mm -hmm. and cows. But by his own blood, mm -hmm. he entered in once into the holy place. He did. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. What else? For it, the blood, I'm sorry, for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, mm -hmm. how much more shall the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. who through the internal spirit, Offered himself without thought of God. Mm -hmm. Purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. Okay, so now that you don't have to do, we don't have to kill the goat. I don't have to do that. I don't have to kill the goat for myself, my family, then you guys and stuff like We got Christ for that now. That's why we're in the New Testament. Okay, so when someone says, well, why don't you kill animals? Because we don't have to. We read Hebrews that you don't have to do that anymore. That's why it was so hard for the apostles and Pauls to make messianics. Because they're like, well, wait a minute, I don't believe in this guy. No, we still got to go do this, you know, killing uh, bulls and goats and stuff. That why Now you see why there's friction? They've been doing it forever, okay? But then there's, okay, well, you don't have to do that because of Christ. That is a big paradigm shift. That's a big change. Y'all understand that, right? That would be, that's a huge change, okay? So that's why it was a big deal. Drop down to verse 22, okay? 22. Verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Yes, it is. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Do we have someone who shed their blood for us? Because if we didn't, then we need to still be sacrificing these animals. There's no two ways about it. There's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. You can keep all the commandments you want, but without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sin. Okay, so but but we do have someone. We have a mediator. We have a high priest. We have a Messiah. We have the Lamb of God. Now we understand why he's called the Lamb of God, the sacrifice. Right? Go ahead. And it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens mm -hmm. should be pur purified with these, mm -hmm. but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Mm -hmm. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, mm -hmm. which are the figures of the true, mm -hmm. but into heaven itself, mm -hmm. now to appear in the presence of God for us. Yeah, the tabernacle and all the things that we're doing down here, it's a shadow of what goes on in heaven. The protocol. That way we can recognize some things, a few things, when he comes and when he when there's a certain protocol he wants us to do, you kind of have an idea. You're like, oh, OK, I see. Got to make that sacrifice. Like when we get into our lesson tabernacles that they have to go up year to year, year by year to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. But now you have an idea. So when it happens, it's not going to be that strange. You're like, well, yeah, we got to go to Jerusalem. <laughs> we got to go. That's why these things are things that are ordained in heaven. OK. And we're just trying to rehearse the matter right here so we have at least an idea of what God wants us to do. At least we have a clue. Okay, go ahead, brother. Nor yet that he should offer himself often mm -hmm. as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. Mm -hmm. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Yes. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, mm -hmm. but after this the judgment. That's true. Go ahead. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Mm -hmm. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time mm -hmm. without sin unto salvation. There you go. That's what we're talking about right there, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Romans 5. That's what we're talking about. And he is that atoning sacrifice for us. Go to Romans 5. That's why it keeps talking about his death and the things that he has done. That's why it is so important. But you also got, you guys are getting a little glimpse as to why it was so hard for the first century, the apostles, to actually convert people. Because this is brand new to them. But they don't understand the scriptures. The apostles understood the scripture because, you know, the Lord opened their eyes to understanding. I'm the one you, were I'm the one you was reading about, is what he's saying. When the Messiah was here, it is I, the scriptures, they testify of me. If you believe Moses, you would believe me because he was talking about me. Right. That's what he's talking about. So all this stuff, this is what he's talking about him entering in the Holy of Holy. He resurrected, he ascended up to the father. Now he has an account who all everyone he's going to save, everyone he's going to come back and give that immortal body. Now he has that account. OK, so Romans five, pick it up at six. 
Verse 6. For when we were yet without without strength, mm -hmm. in due time Christ died for the ungodly. He did. Go ahead. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Mm -hmm. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Okay. Say so scarcely hardly anybody for a righteous man uh, will one die. Hardly. Yet peradventure or perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. For a good man, someone who's trying, but, in verse 8, But God commanded his love toward us, mm -hmm. and that while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. He did it even though we broke that covenant. Didn't Israel break that covenant? Mm -hmm. Over and over, over and over, mm -hmm. they broke that covenant. But yet, while we were still sinners, the Messiah still died for us. That's what he's saying. The Messiah still died. People were still sinning today, and yet he still died for us. Go ahead. Much more than mm -hmm. being now justified by his blood. That's how we're justified. Go ahead. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Go ahead. For if when we were enemies, mm -hmm. we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Mm -hmm. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Go ahead, brother. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Christ, mm -hmm. by whom we have now received the atonement. We received what? We have received the atonement. That's what we're talking about. That's how we got it. We received the atonement. That's why we don't kill a lamb. Because with Christ, we received the atonement. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, don't let anyone trip you up. Why you do this? Why you don't do that? Or what? We, we're following the scripture. That's all we're doing. We're just doing it according to scripture. Okay? That's why we're doing it. So, and we are saved from wrath from that. Okay? So, what I want to do now is go to Isaiah 13. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah 13. And we're going to start to transition a little bit towards tabernacles. Okay, we're going to transition towards the next part of this uh, feast. But we're still dealing with atonement for right now. But the transition is coming. Okay, so when we get to Isaiah, I want to get chapter 13, if you don't mind, sir. Isaiah chapter 13, and I want to read verse... 9 chapter 13 let's start at verse 9 go ahead behold the day of the lord cometh mm -hmm. cruel both with wrath and fierce anger mm -hmm. to lay the hand desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it go ahead for the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light mm -hmm. and the sun shall be darkened in his going forth mm -hmm. and the moon shall not cause her light to shine go ahead and i will punish the world for their evil mm -hmm. and the wicked for their iniquity yep and i will call the arrogancy of the proud of to see mm -hmm. and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible what else i will make a man more precious than fine gold mm -hmm. even a man that a golden wedge of O far. O far. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place mm -hmm. in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Go ahead. And it shall be as the chaste roe, mm -hmm. and as a sheep that no man taketh up. Mm -hmm. They shall every man turn to his own people, mm -hmm. and flee every one into his own land. Okay, so he's talking about a time period when he's coming. And that time period, let's go to uh, Leviticus 25. Okay, that time period he's coming is uh, it's not a 24 hour period, but it's a time period of everything's going to be reconciled. So when he's coming, he's coming to reconcile us. Okay, on Passover, he paid the price. Okay, on Passover, he paid. On atonement, he's going to come to collect. Okay, so Leviticus 25. And let's look at verse 8 so we can look at this jubilee because Passover is not just a day, but it's also the year of jubilee, like the 50th year, which is liberty, total freedom. OK, it also symbolizes that. So let's go to Leviticus 25. Pick it up at verse 8, brother. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years mm -hmm. unto thee, mm -hmm. seven times seven years. Mm -hmm. And the space of the seven Sabbaths mm -hmm. of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Okay, so seven times seven is forty-nine, right? Forty-nine years. Okay, go ahead. Then shall thou call the trumpet of the jubile to sound on the tenth day of mm -hmm. the seventh month. Mm -hmm. In the day of atonement shall mm -hmm. ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Oh, okay. All right, this is where we're getting where the, the Lord, when he returns, it'll come in the year of Pentecost or the year of Jubilee, okay, on the Day of Atonement. It all starts to go together. It all starts to go together, all right, because we're talking about the gathering, the gathering, you know, with Pentecost being the first fruit, trumpets announcing his coming on the Day of Pentecost to atone for everything. 
This is what's starting to happen. Verse 10. And you shall hallow the 50th year. 50th year, go ahead. And proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants mm -hmm. thereof. Mm -hmm. It shall be a jubilee unto you. Jubilee is a, a, a celebration, okay? <laughs> celebration of freedom, okay? The year of jubilee. This is when the Lord's coming back in that year. Okay, go ahead. And you shall return every man unto his possession. Mm -hmm. And you shall return every man unto his family. You shall do all of that. All of that. All right. Now, we're going to look a little bit. Uh, we're going to look a little bit more and then we'll move on. Let's go um, to. You know what? We're going to move forward. I want to go to 1 Corinthians 15. And now we're going to go ahead and transition towards tabernacles. 1 Corinthians 15. Okay. And when you get to 1 Corinthians 15... Now we're going to go past. We were there before, but we're going to uh, start at verse 12. This time we're going to start at verse 12. Go ahead. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, mm -hmm. how say some among you that there is no resurrection of go, the dead? Go ahead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, mm -hmm. then is Christ not risen? Mm -hmm. And if Christ be not risen, mm -hmm. then is our preaching vain? Mm -hmm. And your faith is also vain? So you believe for nothing, okay? If he didn't write, if he didn't raise up, then... Oh, yeah. What I'm saying to you and what I'm trying to teach you is in vain. It doesn't mean anything if he didn't raise, if he is not resurrected. If he is not on the right hand of the Father right now, then all my preaching is for nothing. And if he's not been risen, then your faith is for nothing. Because you serve a living God, a living Messiah who's alive right now. Okay, continue. Yea, and if we are found false witnesses of God, mm -hmm. because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ. He did. Whom he raised not up, mm -hmm. if so be that the dead rise not. Mm -hmm. For if the dead rise not, mm -hmm. then it's not Christ raised. Right, because he's the one who, he's the life, right? He's the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, behold, I come quick and my reward is with me. It says those who sleep in the grave will hear his voice, but that's not going to happen if he's not alive. Mm -hmm. So there is no resurrection if Christ is not alive. There is no resurrection. So all we're doing, everything is in vain. Go ahead, brother. And if Christ be not raised, mm -hmm. your faith is vain. Yep. Ye are yet in your sins. And we have no atonement if you don't have that. Mm -hmm. So those who kick against Christ and the Messiah, they have no atonement. Even keeping the commandments is not going to be enough because they don't have faith. There is no Messiah. They don't believe in him. Then he is not their atonement. Go ahead. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ mm -hmm. are perished. Go ahead. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, yes. we are all men most miserable. Go ahead. But now is Christ risen from the dead mm -hmm. and become the first fruit of them that slept. Yep. For since by man came death, mm -hmm. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Yes, this is what we're talking about, okay? That's what we're talking about now. I'm going to move on to tabernacles. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to transition a little bit here. So let me get to that real quick. And just give me one second. And turn with me over to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And let's go ahead and transition into tabernacles real quick. And then we'll begin our feast. So let's look at uh, tabernacles. Are you in Leviticus 23? And start at verse 33. Verse 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. saying, the, 50, the fifteenth day of his seventh month mm -hmm. shall be the Feast of the Tabernacles, mm -hmm. seven days unto the Lord. Okay, Feast of Tabernacles, how long is it? Seven, seven days. days. Go ahead, brother. On the first day shall be a holy congregation. Yes. You shall do no servile work therein. Okay. 
Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. We have Christ. Go ahead. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation mm -hmm. unto you. Mm -hmm. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto yes. the Lord. Yes, sir. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. Okay, so now we have an idea. Feast of Tabernacles, seven days. Okay, don't work. Holy convocation, you gather. Okay, then on the eighth day, okay, you do the same thing. Okay, seven days you have that feast. Okay. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 16. Let's go to Deuteronomy 16, because there's really, okay, there's seven feasts of the Lord, high days, holy days. But three of them, where you gather together, you feast. At this time, they went up to Jerusalem to do so, okay? But we're supposed to gather together three times a year, three feasts. There's seven feasts, but three times where we're supposed to do this, what we're doing today, okay? So go to uh, Deuteronomy 16 and start at verse 16. 16 and 16? Yes, sir. Three times in a year mm -hmm. shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God mm -hmm. in the place which he shall choose, mm -hmm. in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, yep. and in the Feast of Weeks, mm -hmm. and in the Feast of Tabernacles, mm -hmm. and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Okay, so you bring your food, you bring your offering, you bring everything three times a year. This is when they go to Jerusalem, okay? That's why Paul said, I must by all means get to Jerusalem to keep this feast, right? In the New Testament, that's what he says. So we look at it, what? The Feast of Unleavened Bread, we're supposed to meet. The Feast of Week, which is also called Pentecost, okay? Um, which just means 50. And then the Feast of Tabernacles. That's what we're doing today, okay? We're gathering today. And they shall not appear empty before the Lord. So you bring your food, your offering, and all that. We're trying to memorialize this, okay? That's what we want to do. Read verse 17. Every man... Every man shall give as he is able, mm -hmm. according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. Okay, so every man shall give as he is able. So whatever you're blessed with, as you are able, that's what you bring to that feast. And that's what you bless the Lord with, okay? Because we're supposed to be rejoicing before the Lord. You share your sustenance, okay? Like that. So Exodus 23, let's look at it one more time. Now we're talking about Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, or in gathering, when we dwell together, okay? Or the Feast of Booths, okay? Same thing. Tabernacles, booths, it's all the same, okay? So let's say Exodus 23, and when you get there, brother, let's pick it up at verse 14. 14, 23 and 14 of Exodus. Go ahead. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. A feast, go ahead. Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt eat... Unleavened bread seven days. Yes, sir. As I commanded thee, mm -hmm. the time appointed mm -hmm. of the month of Bib. Yes. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. What else? And the feast of harvest, mm -hmm. the first fruit of thy labor, mm -hmm. which thou hast sown in the field. Which is, that's called uh, Pentecost, okay? Feast of harvest or the feast of first fruit. It's called Pentecost. And what else? And the Feast of Ingathering mm -hmm. is in the end of the year. Which is called Tabernacles. Ingathering. Okay, go ahead. When thou hast gathered in thy labor out of the field. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Okay. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we've already looked at uh, Leviticus 25 already. So, we're going to look at Isaiah 27. Isaiah 27. This is about gathering us, or we gathering. Right now, we're gathering ourselves, but there, there will be a time where the Lord will gather his people as fulfillment of prophecy. There will be a time in Isaiah 27, and pick it up at verse 12, brother. Isaiah 27 and verse 12. And it shall come to pass in that day mm -hmm. that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, mm -hmm. and you shall be gathered one by one, mm -hmm. O ye children of Israel. Yes, we will. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day mm -hmm. that the great trumpet shall be blown, mm -hmm. and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, mm -hmm. and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, Yes, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mountain of yes. Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Let's look at this uh, gathering, okay? So we know there's going to be a gathering, because that's what this is all about. We we're going to get to Zechariah in a second, but let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4 first. Okay. This is part of this is a uh, part of the gathering here in 1 Thessalonians 4. We look at a little bit more gathering. Okay. 
and First Thessalonians four and fourteen. Let's start at verse fourteen. First Thessalonians four, start at fourteen. For if we believe that Christ died and rose again, mm -hmm. even so them also which sleep in Christ will God bring with him. Yes, sir. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, mm -hmm. shall not prevent them which are asleep. Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven mm -hmm. with a shout. What else? With the voice of the archangel mm -hmm. and with the trump of God, mm -hmm. and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. Keep going. Go ahead. Sorry. Then we which are then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together mm -hmm. with them in the clouds yes. to meet the Lord in the air, mm -hmm. and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now isn't that not a gathering? Yes, sir. That's him gathering them together. Yes, sir. Gathering us with him together. That's a gathering. Okay, this is what this in gathering is. That's why it's called the feast of in gathering or tabernacles. That way we will be gathered to him, and tabernacles or booth we will dwell with him. Make sense? That's why it's called the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of Ingathering. When we gather together, Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. Zechariah? Zechariah, yeah, Zechariah 14. Let me see. Yep, Zechariah 14. Now let's pick it up at verse 1. Let's take a look at this. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to mm -hmm. battle, mm -hmm. and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, mm -hmm. and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, mm -hmm. and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the now, city. all those things is going to happen, and then what's going to happen? Then shall the Lord go forth mm -hmm. and fight against those nations. Mm -hmm. And when he fought in the day of the battle. What else is going to happen? And his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. which is before Jerusalem yes, on sir. the east. Yes, sir. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east mm -hmm. and toward the west. Mm -hmm. And there shall be a very great um, valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, mm -hmm. and half of it toward the south. Yes, sir. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountain, mm -hmm. for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azal. Mm -hmm. ye, uh, yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Mm -hmm. And the Lord my God shall come, mm -hmm. and all the saints with thee. And the saints with thee. Oh, so the saints are going to be with them too, huh? So there's some gathering right there, and it says, And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Verse 6, go and ahead. It shall come to pass in that day mm -hmm. that the light shall not be clear nor dark, mm -hmm. but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, mm -hmm. not day nor night, mm -hmm. but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Even at evening time there shall be light. Go ahead. And it shall be in the day that the living water shall go forth out of the Jerusalem, mm -hmm. half of them toward the former sea, mm -hmm. and half of them toward the hinder sea. Mm -hmm. In summer and in winter shall it be. What else? And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In the day shall there be one Lord, mm -hmm. and his name one. We'll have his name right that time. Drop down to verse 11, brother. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, mm -hmm. but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Okay, okay. Now, now is Jerusalem safely inhabited right now? No, I don't think so. Go ahead. And this shall be the plague where with the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Mm -hmm. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Mm -hmm. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So he's going to do a lot of house cleaning when he gets here. When he prepares this place for his saints. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them mm -hmm. and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor mm -hmm. and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor mm -hmm. and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together gold and silver and apparel and in great abundance what else and so shall be the plague of the horse of the mule of the camel and the ass and all the beasts that shall be in these tents mm -hmm. this plague Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which come against Jerusalem mm -hmm. shall even go up from year to year to worship mm -hmm. the king, the Lord of hosts, and, and what? to keep the feast of tabernacles. Wait, 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 wait. In 16, did you just read, and it shall come pass that every one that is left of all the nations that which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts? And they're going to they're keep what? The, 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 and they're going to keep the feast of tabernacles. So if we're if if we're gonna do it in the future, then why not try to memorialize it right now? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's go ahead, 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, mm -hmm. the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. What else? And if the family of Egypt not go up and come not and have no rain, mm -hmm. there shall be the plague wherewith mm -hmm. the Lord will smite the heathen that mm -hmm. come not up to the keep the feast of the tabernacle. Okay, another and, thing. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, there's another thing I wanted to do when you go to Leviticus 25. Go to Leviticus 25 real quick for me. And he said he's going to smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So they, they don't have a choice. When it's time to go, it is time to go. When it's time to observe the Feast of Tabernacles, then it is just time to go. Let's read a couple more places. Okay. Let's go Leviticus 25. Let's set these captives free. 25, read 1 verse 10. Verse 10. Go ahead. And ye shall hollow the 50th year mm -hmm. and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Mm -hmm. It shall be a jubilee unto you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall return every man unto his possession. Mm -hmm. And ye shall return every man unto his family. That's right. So even if you had a guy who was a servant up to you, it's just a year of jubilee of total liberty of freedom. So even if you had a servant, you set him free. Okay, in the fifth year, you set him free. It's complete liberty. And like we will have, we'll have liberty from all our sins, the burdens of our sins, the, the penalty for all those sins. We're going to have complete liberty when you get that new body. Okay, so we're in Leviticus. Go to 23 so we can deal with this real quick. You're in Leviticus. Go to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And let's deal with at the end of the tabernacles real quick. 23 and start at verse 39. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, mm -hmm. when you have gathered the fruit of the land, mm -hmm. you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Mm -hmm. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, mm -hmm. and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. The eighth day. So, eight days from now, okay, which would be right now is the Shabbat, the weekly one. The next Saturday is the eighth day. Say, okay, so on the eighth day. Go ahead in verse 40. And you shall take you on the first day the mm -hmm. bowls of goodly trees. Mm -hmm. Branches of palm trees, mm -hmm. and the bowls of thick trees, mm -hmm. and willows of the brook. Mm -hmm. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. You're supposed to rejoice, have a good time before the Lord seven days. So technically, we're supposed to be in booths. If we want to follow the letter, we're supposed to be in books where we take goodly trees and branches of palm trees and thick trees and willows of the brook and rejoice before the Lord. Of course, we can't do that. But today they memorialize it and they go. They'll go to a campground. They'll go to uh, a Hebrew Israelite community and they will dwell in tent, tents because it's all temporary uh, dwellings anyway. When we gather together, this is temporary dwellings because the real dwelling, the real habitation will be in Jerusalem. OK, so let's go to Nehemiah 8. And start to close it out. First, we dwell in temporary, temporary tabernacles or dwellings, and then we move. We move on because we're all we also our body is a tabernacle, but it's also this particular body is temporary, just like those tents and those booths and stuff are temporary. Okay, it's to teach us. Okay, Nehemiah eight. Nehemiah 8, pick it up at verse 14, brother, 8 and 14. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses mm -hmm. that the children of Israel shall dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Okay. okay, so when they were coming out of captivity, okay, in Nehemiah's time, they found the books and they're like, wait a minute, we're supposed to be keeping this. So then they found the books and they saw what they were keeping and then they started to do that. Go ahead and 15. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities mm -hmm. and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth onto the mountain mm -hmm. and fetch olive branches and pine branches mm -hmm. and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booth as it is written. Okay, see, that's what we're trying to do. They went back. They saw they were coming out of captivity, you know, Nehemiah. And they saw, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. When we find these books of Moses, we're supposed to be doing this. We're supposed to be dwelling in booths. And the, what do they do? They said, well, that's what we got to do. Gather all these branches here so we can dwell in boots, as it is written. Verse 16. So the people went forth mm -hmm. and brought them and made themselves boots, everyone upon the roof of his house, mm -hmm. and in their court, and in their courts of the house of God, yep. and in their street of the water gate, mm -hmm. and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. What else? And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made boots mm -hmm. and sat under the boots. Yes. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, mm -hmm. into the day that had the children of Israel done so. Mm -hmm. And there was very great gladness. Yeah, see, they're happy about it. They're rejoicing it. They figured out, just like right now, you guys are all awakened. You're awakened to the truth of Torah. And you say, man, we're supposed to be keeping these feast days. 
That's the same thing they did in, in Nehemiah's day. They did the same thing. They come out of captivity and realize, wait a minute, we're supposed to be doing this. Mm -hmm. And then they started doing it. Same thing, brother. Go ahead. Also, day by day, mm -hmm. from the first day unto the last day, mm -hmm. he read in the books of the law of God. Mm -hmm. And they kept the feast seven days. And what else? And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly, mm -hmm. according unto the manner. So what we're doing is not so strange. We're just figuring it out. They figured it out and they started doing it. We're doing the same thing. We're like, oh, wait a minute. We're supposed to try to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what that's what we're doing, brothers and sisters. Let's round it out with a few more of these scriptures here and deal with our own personal tabernacle. Second Peter. Second Peter. Okay, Second Peter. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll read this one in Leviticus 23 for you real quick. You, if you guys want to uh, note down Leviticus 23, I'm going to read 41 and 43. Leviticus 23, 41, it says, And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in brutes seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths. That your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Okay, that's Leviticus 23 and 41, 41 through 43. Okay, so it's about those dwelling in booths. So he pointed that out. So now we are in 2 Peter 1, and I want to pick it up at verse 13, dealing with our tabernacle, our temporary home. This, this particular body is temporary. 2 Peter 1, 13. Go ahead, brother. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in the tabernacle mm -hmm. to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Which is what I'm trying to do right now. Put you in remembrance. Go ahead. Knowing that shortly I must put off this by my tabernacle, mm -hmm. even as our Lord Christ has showed me. Go ahead. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. So even after I die... Okay, you would endeavor to remember all these things that I'm teaching you. Okay, so let's go to 2 Corinthians. He mentioned his tabernacle too, this, this body of ours, 2 Corinthians 5. Okay, we're going to go 2 Corinthians 5. So I'm saying all these things, hopefully that for you remember these things. These things that we read for you right here. Hope you remember these things. 2 Corinthians 5, pick it up at verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of the tabernacle were dissolved, mm -hmm. we have a building of God, mm -hmm. a house not made with hands, mm -hmm. internal in the heavens. Mm -hmm. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon our house which is from heaven. Mm -hmm. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Yep. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, mm -hmm. being burdened, we are. not for that we would be unclothed, mm -hmm. but clothed upon the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Yes, that mortality might be swallowed up to, of life. Let's look at um, let's look at that real quick. He said that mortality might be swallowed up to life. Let's look at it in First Corinthians, since you're already there. First Corinthians, and then after we leave this uh, Corinthians here, I'm gonna read one more place, and then we're done. First Corinthians, so we can see how this mortality is swallowed up in life. So First Corinthians 15. First uh, okay. Corinthians. Chapter 15. So let's look at how this mortality might be swallowed up in life. 15, pick it up at verse 35. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. Go ahead. But some man will say, mm -hmm. how are the dead raised up? Mm -hmm. And with what body do they come? Okay, so what, what, how are they going to come? What body? What body is going to be used? What else? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. That's right. Go ahead. And that which thou sowest. Thou sowest not the body that shall be, mm -hmm. but bear grain it may chance of wheat mm -hmm. or of some other grain. Go ahead. But God giveth a body as it is pleased him, mm -hmm. and to every seed his own body. Mm -hmm. All flesh is not the same flesh, yep. but there is one kind of flesh of men, mm -hmm. another flesh of beasts, mm -hmm. another of fishes, and another of birds. Go ahead. There are also celestial bodies mm -hmm. and body terrestrial, mm -hmm. but the glory of the celestial is one, mm -hmm. and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Okay, so he's talking about a spiritual body and an earthly body, okay, or a carnal body. He said there are two different things. Go ahead. There is one glory of the sun, mm -hmm. and another glory of the moon, mm -hmm. and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. Yep. 
so also is the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. It is sown in corruption. Yep. It is raised in corruption. You won't have that same body when he raised you up. Go ahead, brother. It is sown in dishonor. Mm -hmm. It is raised in glory. Mm -hmm. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. Mm -hmm. It is raised a spiritual body. There you go. Go ahead. There is a natural body mm -hmm. and there is a spiritual body. There's a natural body and then there's a spiritual body. The body that Christ has right now is a spiritual body, but that natural body that he had is dead. Okay. Drop down to verse 40. Well, verse 47. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth. Yep. Earthy. Mm -hmm. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Mm -hmm. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Mm -hmm. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Okay, so it's not just like there used to be a doctrine. No one really says it now, but it used to be a doctrine. People thought that when you died, all of a sudden you become an angel or something. Well, we know that's not true. It's two different creatures. It's two different things. Oh, so-and-so died and now they got their wings. Doesn't work like that. Okay? Does not work like that. It's two different things. He even said that as it is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, like an angel or something, such are they also that are heavenly. Okay? All right? So it's two different things. 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, mm -hmm. we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now we're going to get changed into a spiritual body. Now let's see how this is going to happen. Go to 51. Drops, just start at 51. Behold. I show you a mystery. Mm -hmm. We shall not all sleep, mm -hmm. but we shall all be changed. Mm -hmm. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, mm -hmm. at the last trump, mm -hmm. for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised mm -hmm. incorruptible, mm -hmm. and we shall be changed. Mm -hmm. For this corruptible must put on an incorruption, yep. and this mortal must put on immort immortality. What else? So when it corruptible shall have put on incorruption, mm -hmm. and it mortal shall have put on immortality, mm -hmm. then shall be brought to pass the mm -hmm. thing that is written, mm -hmm. death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Let's go to our last place so we can show people uh, why we do this the way we do it in Deuteronomy 14 so we can close it out. Let's go to Deuteronomy 14. Now we see how this tabernacle of ours, this body, is temporary. Okay, now we know why it's temporary, and we know that we're going to exchange this vile body for a spiritual body. Now, let's look at this feast real quick, because we already know it said three times a year you're supposed to come together, right? Yes, sir. You're supposed to gather, holy convocation. Now, let's see what we're supposed to do when we get there. Deuteronomy 14, pick it up at verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, mm -hmm. that the field bringeth forth year by year. So you don't appear before the Lord empty. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Okay. Tithe of thy corn, mm -hmm. of thy wine, and thine oil, mm -hmm. and the firstlings of thy herd and thy flock. Okay, so there's meat and vegetables right there, and there's oil, and there's wine. Go ahead. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. This is what we're trying to teach right now, that you may fear the Lord, meaning follow him or obey him. Go ahead. And if the way be too long for thee, mm -hmm. so that thou art not able to carry it, mm -hmm. or if the place be too far from thee, mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, mm -hmm. when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, mm -hmm. then shalt thou turn it into money. Okay, so there is money. Go ahead. And bind up the money in thine hand. And what else? And shall go on to the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt bestow the money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Like what? For oxen, mm -hmm. or for sheep, mm -hmm. or for wine. Or for wine, what or else? Or for strong drink. Or for strong drink, go ahead. For whatsoever thy soul desire, mm -hmm. and thou shalt eat therefore before the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and thou shalt rejoice mm -hmm. thou and thine household. Thine and thy household. Is that the end of that? You want to finish that? Yeah. Go ahead. That was oh, the end of that? Done. No. Oh, yeah, that one's done. Okay. Yeah. So, that, like it says, then y'all should go and turn that money and bind it, uh, the money in thy hand, and thou shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatever thy soul lusted after. Okay? An example. For oxen. Okay? So, oxen, that's fine. Or for sheep. Or for wine. Or for strong drink. Or for whatever thy soul lusted after. Obviously, you look at the uh, the dietary law or whatever for those things that are clean. You can't eat something that is unclean, okay? And uh, whatever your soul desired after, it's like whatever you want. It's a party, okay? And it said, and thou shalt eat before the Lord. So we're going to feast and going to eat before the Lord. And for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, it said you shall rejoice, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thy whole household, so your whole family, rejoice before the Lord because we're memorializing and we're trying to follow his instructions. So, with that, this lesson has been from atonement to tabernacles.
from atonement to tabernacles. And with that, I hope you've been edified. I hope this has been a blessing to you and your household. And until next time, join us. Search the scriptures and prove all things. Thank you.